has been a great refreshment. Good things to consider. I want to sincerely thank the Lord and thank you all for traveling and coming and bringing good things for coming so far. You know, you've, it's evident that well, the body has been growing. You know, we've yeah. been talking about things, and it's I've been able to get a bigger, bigger picture. I think uh, you can probably say the same thing. You know, you can. Yeah. I can see farther today than I could than I could yesterday. So that's that's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, you brethren came a long ways, but uh, there's one one amongst us who who came further even yeah. still. Yeah. Um, one, the one. heaven to earth and back up and that he's, he's here with us here so Amen. Mm-hmm. <coughs> um, we'll start we'll start in uh, we've been talking about the the high priesthood of, of Jesus and the high priest in general and these this this these really at the cent- center of all these things is coming to God that's mm-hmm. that's at the the purpose of the high, it was coming to God. That's that God made provision for men to come to Him. Amen. That was the purpose of the high priest, and this He displayed this uh, in the law as a as a as a type, as a shadow, as a pattern, it, as we've been expounded on, of of what Jesus would do for us, of what Jesus would do and is doing. <coughs> And this is every man's purpose: is to come to God. This, yeah. this you can you can sit right now, today. Here's what uh, here's what it says. Paul Paul you know preached a good he preached a good message in Athens. He he had these other men. They had other things to say, but Paul he had the right things to say. He he said um, <coughs> that God has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, and has determined the times before appointed. And the bounds of their habitation. See, Amen. but it does that they may seek Him. Amen. That they may seek the Lord, Amen. if haply they might feel after Him and find Him, though He be not far from every one of us. So that's Amen. what we're talking about. We're talking about seeking and finding God. Amen. Amen. Is there anything else that matters, brethren? Is there? When you find Him, you've, you'll sell everything you have. Yes. Amen. Everything you have, and coming, coming, coming is not easy though. It's not a simple task, um, and we shouldn't. You know, you hear, you'll hear this kind of if you if you kind of get an ear for it, you can kind of hear that there's a message being preached that it's well, it's very easy. Well, it's not very easy. It wasn't very easy. Our salvation is not a simple thing, um, and it shouldn't shouldn't be viewed that way. It's complicated. It's so so complicated that we couldn't even come to come to him on our own. He had to draw us to him, right? He he said, "No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day." Amen. Here we have it. You can't even you can't even come to Jesus unless you draw. And if you have come to Jesus, you can reason with it the other way. If you have come to Jesus, it's because the Father drew you to him. Amen. Amen. So thanks be unto God. And my point isn't really to make a distinction between those who um, God has drawn and those who who He hasn't drawn. That's not the purpose of, of the Scripture, um, because in uh, Jesus also said that if I, I and I, if I be lifted up, Amen. I will draw all men unto myself. Yes. Amen. All all men. Yes. Amen. The death of Christ mm-hmm. is like a great trumpet that br- yes. come come. Come, Amen. come to the waters. Amen. Come, Amen. come Amen. ye by. Amen. You that have no money, come yeah. by and eat. Amen. <laughs> it's a great drawing. And you're drawn to his death. He said that, this he said, speaking of the death, that he would, so you're drawn to the death mm-hmm. of Jesus. You're drawn to one that died. See, in a, in a worldly, worldly uh, arena, that doesn't sound very... There's no interest in that, you know. Why? Why would a man? Why would men be drawn to one who died to seek 
you know, see, but there's bigger things here, you know. And it makes it easier for you to die because you're drawn to one who died already. Amen. <laughs> so what we've been developing um, these past few days is is the high the high priesthood. Well, God started it long before we did. You know, we didn't we didn't come up with these kind of things on our own. You know, these aren't we didn't like search this. You know, He didn't give us a book here and we didn't just search it out. Kind of came up. He He revealed it unto us. Yes, Amen. God God is the only one that could do this. He He had to declare uh, the ministry of the high priest. He had to. Show us and tell us. He's the one that did it. That's the only way it could have worked. Now it's, and I'm speaking of the um, the 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 uh, the high priest of old, I guess the 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 Aaronic priesthood. God had to. God came up with that. It wasn't. They didn't come out of the wilderness and yes. and say, you know what? I think that I should. We should really just start a. We should build a little tent and start a get these elaborate things together and no God God said in it God said it <clears throat> it had to it had to be it was something and it had to be so it had to be ordained and directed by the Almighty himself mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. it was God who was directing their coming in <clears throat> here's what he said in Exodus 28 and verse 1. And I searched, this is, as Aaron, this is the first reference that I could find to Aaron and the priesthood in Exodus 28 and verse 1. And here's what he said. God brought it up, he said, <clears throat> to Moses, and take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. God was the one who called Aaron. And the one who directed him in the work that he would perform before him. The Lord labored over giving Aaron all the details. There was detail upon detail that was given to him, making provision to handle all manner of sin and uncleanness. There was there was a direction. If this sort of sin happened, you would do this. If this other sort of sin, you would do that. There was no there was no nothing was left out. It was it was perfect direction. And all was given by God. I'm laboring on this point that God was the one that developed the priesthood. <clears throat> and this shows us the necessity for the provision uh, to be cleansed. You know, we, need, we needed this to be provided. And God has said m- so much about this high priest. There's the, all the... the Many words in Exodus and the entire book of Leviticus is all specifically to this priest, to the office of the priest. So why is it there's not very much being said about it in the church? I'd, I'd say that an enemy has done this. Amen. Amen. I'd say that there, see, because it's Amen. necessary. It's necessary that you know about these things, Amen. and it's not. It's we didn't like come here just. Well, it seemed like a good idea to kind of, you know, talk about the high priest. These are necessary for our faith. Yes. Yes. We're, we, it was said that we, we gain assurance and confidence through these things. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, just in case you were wondering, Jesus, the high priest wasn't there to condemn anybody. <laughs> They, they, they were condemned already. So that our high priest is, and our high priest is the same way. He's not a, he's not there to condemn us. He's his ministry at the right hand. He's ministering as our high priest, and he's for us. He's ministering for us. And uh, Jesus is, he's he is he is our high priest. I'll just tell you that right now. He he is our high priest, and he is. He is faithfully executing the will of the God, will of God by getting you, the child of God, the provisions that you need to make it from here to there. Yeah. This is to the end that God's manifold wisdom might be made known by the church. Uh-huh. And the consummation of Jesus' work is described in Revelation 7, beginning in uh, verse 9. 
after this. This is you. You want to know what happens after this, right? <laughs> after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, <coughs> stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands, and they crowd with a loud voice, saying, "Salvation." To, the, to our God, which sitteth on the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and the elders and the four beasts fell before the throne on their face, faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto God forever and ever Amen. Amen. You're getting there because the Lamb brought you there. That's how you came in. That's how you'll get there. In the end, that's what we're going to be talking about. So let, let's just continue to talk about it now. So <clears throat> this is what God is doing. This is what he's doing. You're, the point, you're not, I like what Brother Pat mentioned, that when you draw near, you're not talking about what you're doing anymore. You're ta you start talking about what God's doing. It's all in the throne room. It's about what God is doing in the Lamb. Amen. Uh, the text that I was uh, given by the Lord was Hebrews uh, five, but I've shifted. It, you know, I was get, get, given to see some other things, so I wanted I wanted to start and. Um, Verse 15 of chapter 4. But, um, <clears throat> so we've got a we've got this high priest, and he's gonna he's gonna minister the things that that we need to get from here to there. This is what he's doing now. He's saving to the uttermost those that. Come to come unto God by Him. So, yes, amen. and really, this ministry, Jesus' ministry, is only appreciated by those who have an intense hatred and repulsion for sin. This is, you know, if you if you're one who doesn't mind sin, that the ministry of the high priest really, it, you could, it's a take it or leave it type of a thing. You know, he didn't, because he, he, that's what he dealt with. That the high priest was he, he handled sin. Amen. <coughs> This is also this is also why it's important for God because God it was very important for God to have sin handled as well so <coughs> so I ask you child of God are you concerned about coming before coming before the Lord Amen. have you found yourself to be tempted by sin do you have an old man which you would, that you want to put off yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. have you felt the need for help from one who's able who has been tempted and come out victorious? Do you need? Do you have need of help for someone like that? I, I do. Yeah. Do you desire to come before God with boldness and confidence? How about that? Is that something that you're interested in? Do you desire the things that pertain to God? Do you? Well, God has a message for you then, and it is it is found in Hebrews once again. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. <coughs> but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Amen. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For every high priest is taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself is compassed with infirmity. I've got a... Uh, we're real, I'm really just going to camp. You know, this is there's a lot of, there's a lot said here. So I'm going to I'm going to try to build on Hebrews 5:1 and take in take in some of these things here. I've got a three point sermon, so it should be very good. You know, that's that's what I'm told at least. So. They 
shall all be taught of God. (laughs) (laughs) Every high priest is taken from among men. Every, every high priest is taken from among men. From among men. That's what we'll start there. We'll start there. Aaron's priesthood started this way. It said, "Take, take Aaron and his brother and his son, or Aaron your brother and his sons, from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office." Aaron was taken from among men, and every high priest is taken from among men. We're going to kind of, the book of Hebrews is like a contrast. You know, he, he takes this, he shows you the pattern, and then he shows you the true. You know, so this is in a sense, you know, this is a pattern. You know, the whole, this whole high priest. So we're going to, we're going to look at, look at the pattern with the true in mind. So we'll, we'll compare and, con- we'll show you the better priest. The glory that excelled. Um, excuse me. So Aaron was taken from among men. He was one of theirs. He he grew up in Egypt, just like everyone else. He could he could he knew what it was like to to grow up in slavery. He he knew what it was like to be in a land that maybe wasn't his own. You know he he knew that um, he knew what it was like to be persecuted and mocked by kings of the world. You know there was much affliction. He was an Israelite. God didn't have a, a priest who was waiting in the wilderness from another country. He, he was from among men. He was one of their own. He ministered on behalf of the Israelites, and he was from among the Israelites. He was one of their own. <clears throat> the fact that Aaron was from among, among the Israelites qualified him to minister on their behalf. <clears throat> this, of course, was to shadow the work that God would do through his son. Mm -hmm. And we've made a point already about the humanity of Christ, and that's, you know, that's um, not a, um, I guess not a Bible, we'll call it that he was the son of man. You know, that the word was made flesh. The word was made flesh. And when the Spirit speaks about the the apostle and high priest of our our profession, um, he's not really looked at in view of the word you know the word you know which was from the beginning he was he's looked at well he he's he's looked at um as well as jesus emmanuel for the word could not be touched with the feeling of our infirmities the word was not tempted at all points in a sense the word had to be made flesh so that he could be taken from among men Amen. The Word did become flesh and did dwell among us. Amen. Amen. The Word, in a sense, now you want to, when I'm, this is a, the Word was not necessarily perfect to be the captain of our salvation. And here's what I mean, that, that it was necessary for the Word to be made flesh. And here's what it says. Um, Matthew 1, 21 says that, and she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Jesus. See, he was brought forth, and they shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And we see Jesus. That's where faith is about seeing, and we see Jesus now. We see Jesus who was made, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man, Amen. for it became him. Amen. It was becoming of God to do this. He saw it, it fit. It was right. It was right for God to do this. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Amen. Our high priest was taken from among men. Amen. Amen. The, the word Amen. became flesh and dwelt among us. He was he was one of us. Amen. The high priest must have have suffered being tempted so that he is able to succor them that are tempted. Amen. 
This is the kind of high priest that we have, brethren. This is our high priest. Amen. The one who ministers on the right hand of God knows what you need in your in your yes, infirmity and in your Amen. weakness. Amen. Amen. Every high priest that is going to minister on behalf of a man has to, in fact, be a man. Amen. This might seem it might seem kind of redundant, but and this is good news. You don't want to have an angel ministering on your behalf before God. Here, um, and I do understand that angels, angels shall, angels minister to those who shall inherit salvation. This is, you know, this is revealed. But it's also said of the angels that um, Ecclesiastes says, "Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin." Amen. And neither say before the angel that it was an error. You know, there's not a lot of mercy that's found with error. See, the, the angels were not shown mercy. No. Mm-hmm. Amen. See, but the, yeah. the men, sons of men were. Mm-hmm. See, we were. So we also, we had to have one who, who knew what it was like to be, to be a man. And he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took upon him the seed of Abraham. Amen. So we're laboring now. We're, I want to affirm to you that, that our high priest was taken from among men. <clears throat> now he was also, let's see if this is kind of like two, on one side of the coin, he was from among men. On the other side, he was he was taken. He was not like those men anymore. See, when the high priest, when the high priest was taken from among the camp, he was no longer, it, he wasn't what he, you know, what, what he did the day before, he didn't go back into that work anymore. He was taken from among men. Every high priest is taken from among men. So this implies also that there wasn't a, this wasn't a necessarily a voluntary thing. It was he was taken from among men. Now something that's taken it, it implies, like I said, that it's no longer a part of that group anymore. And here's what it said of you remember uh, that that uh, Eve was taken from man. Right? Wasn't yeah. Eve, Eve uh-huh. was taken from Adam, and it yeah. says it says of this account, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, He made woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She, excuse me, she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Mm-hmm. The rib didn't volunteer for the work. God took the rib and made something that wasn't. You know, He made something different. He He was taken. She. The rib was no longer a part of Adam anymore. It, mm-hmm. it was a well. There was something else. Can you see where? Yeah. You see? I hope you yeah. see yep. that. <coughs> and God did say, "Take Aaron." That was the first. Mm-hmm. And the first thing that was done, you know, in this that the the reference from when the, that Exodus 28, when God told him, "Take Aaron out." He, he's describing to him the priestly garments. He had to, well, yeah. take him out, put some new clothes on him. Mm-hmm. He can't walk around looking like everyone else. Mm-hmm. He has to, he's got to have some new, he has to have some new linens. <clears throat> so also our high priest, our high priest, he, he, he was, he was taken from among men. He is, he, see, he's like, he's like us, but he's not, he's not, Exactly like us, you know. He's he is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made high above the heavens, and higher and higher than the heavens. So he's I can't I I can't say that about myself. No, that's but that is our high priest. So he is also he's one who knows what it's like to be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, and and he is also at the same time separate from it. Because that's our desire too, is it not? Is it not our desire to be also holy, harmless? I mean, that's where we're headed. You know that, right? That's where we're going. So he's bringing us there. He's bringing us there. And he, they are high priests are ordained for men. The high priest didn't go on like a six-month internship program. This was... This was, they were a high priest. His life was under the Lord. <clears throat> the high priest was ordained and called of God. 
he was ordained and called of God. And Jesus, of course, is the fulfillment of this of this great calling. You know, the great calling and ordination. He was ordained by this decree. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. <coughs> Aaron was never ordained a priest by his sonship. But our, our high priest was. Amen. He's very near to him. He's near to him. Amen. And who is better to be ordained for men than, no, than one who knows what it's like to be a man? Jesus, um, Jesus is the one who knows who knows what it's like. He know, he knows what it's yeah. like. He's he knows what it's like to be uh, to be tempted. He can have compassion. On those who are who are ignorant and out of the way, you know, he he knows he he himself also grew and he grew. Jesus grew. That's quite. I mean, God God in the flesh grew. Now he can also aid you in your growth as well. This is mm-hmm. good. This is good news to me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and he's ordained for men. This is like for all men. You know, yeah. we could say it like that. We, he's not necessarily ordained for you. You know, Jesus isn't just ministering for me. You know, he's ministering for men. This is, well, that, that means you, we could probably share. We could probably tell one another about that, huh? We could probably <laughs> stir each other up about yeah, these things. Yeah. I'm not just talking about something that I have. These things are for you as well. Mm-hmm. And for all men. <clears throat> Jesus isn't just saving me. He's saving all those who come unto God by him, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for us. And the, the verse in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2, that, that Jesus is the propitiation, propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but that of the whole world. Amen. So he is ordained for men. <coughs> Jesus, now... He's working. That's what you know. This ordination. He's he's working. He's a. It's a continual ordination. You know. He's Amen. continually working, and he's faithfully ministering the things of God to all those who receive the testimony that God has given of His Son. <coughs> and he is in verse. Uh, this next phrase here in in chapter one that I want to talk about is that he is ordained for men in things <coughs> pertaining to God. Yes. Amen. Things pertaining to God. <laughs> the high priest was not a psychologist. <laughs> he wasn't a. He didn't settle disputes between men. Jesus didn't even do that while he's on earth. Why? What? What would he do that for in heaven? What? What would be the purpose of that in heaven? <laughs> Who made me judge between you? Right. He wasn't a family counselor, a financial advisor. He. His work is described as things pertaining to God. All the entire work of the high priest, both with Christ and with Aaron, was unto the Lord. Amen. He did not get involved in the affairs of men. He had a greater work to do. Brother Pat mentioned this earlier and I want to read Nehemiah. You remember we remember Nehemiah. Nehemiah 6 and verse 1, Nehemiah is building the wall, and it came to pass that when Sambalot and Tobiah and Jashim and Ab- Abrion and, and the rest of their enemies heard that I was that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at the time I had not set up the doors of the gates. So he'd done a great work, and Sambalot and Jashim sent unto me, saying, Come, let's, let's have a meeting. Let's let's meet together in some of the villages on the plain of Ono, but they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? And they they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them the same manner. <laughs> I'm doing a great work. And I will not come down. This is what Jesus. 
This is what he's doing. He's doing a great work, and he will not come down. you got to come up. That's the thing. If you want to talk, you get up. That's what you do. If you want to talk to him, you come up. Amen. Us as well, you know. That's true of us as well in our own measure. So we're doing a great work here, too. He's doing one in us. The meetings of men can often get in the way of the work of God, you know. But we don't have to come down. Jesus doesn't come down. Just don't come off the wall, that's all. Just keep building. Mm -hmm. Jesus isn't going to come down and handle every little problem. He is doing a great work. He is is offering both gifts and sacrifices Mm -hmm. for sins. Mm -hmm. He is is ministering, he is ordained for men and things pertaining to God. And things pertaining to God... The high priest was ordained to handle sin because if sin is not handled, God cannot work the way that he desires. Amen. We're talking about Jesus works to, to allow this whole thing to come together, this eternal purpose which he's purposed in himself to come together. He's working towards that end. He is, um, God, if, if sin is not taken away, God is compelled to condemn. And we know that this is not God's desire. His, he's, uh, he desires that all, all men should be saved. <clears throat> he took much more delight in saving Noah than condemning the world. I think I'm safe in saying that. I think you'd agree with that. <clears throat> and because Jesus has taken away sin, he, he has taken away sin. Amen. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, God can now really work in men like he is desired to. Amen. Mm-hmm. God is his working and making himself known to men through the work and person of Jesus Christ. So that he who has seen him, seen Jesus. Jesus said, he who has seen me has seen the Father. Amen. And all things are delivered to me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and to whom the Son will reveal him. So if you've got insight on the Son, the Father showed it to you. Amen. The Father revealed it to you now. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Jesus is ministering in things pertaining to God. Amen. He is showing us the Father. Amen. He can have compassion on the ignorant and them that are out of the way because he himself is compassed with infirmity. Jesus has compassion on them that are tempted because he knows what it's like to be tempted. He was tempted at all points as we are, yet without sin. So, so he, you, you can kind of, you can be in the process of, of being killed. You could be, you could be like be, being stoned, and then. Say, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Mm-hmm. How, how was Stephen able to do that? Well, Jesus was ministering things pertaining to God. To oh, him. That's how. He, he, was in a, he was in the time of need, and Jesus yeah. gave him yeah. mercy and grace to help. That's, yeah. that's what he did. Amen. Because Jesus um, is at the right hand of God, he can give you these things. He, can, mm-hmm. he, he is in a position... To, to mediate for you. Amen. He is. He is. There's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and Jesus can have compassion on the ignorant and those that need growth in ignorant, of, you know, those who, are, who need understanding. You know, he, can, yeah. he can do Amen. this. Because he knew what it was like to have to, like I said, grow up. And it says, scripture says that he increased in wisdom. Mm-hmm. So he, well, <laughs> he, we're, this is kind of what he's working in us. He's aiding us to grow up and increase in wisdom and see more. That's what's been happening here. Mm-hmm. Yep. So if you're, if you're one who desires to grow into the measure of the fullness of Christ and to be presented before God is complete in him, then Jesus is that high priest that you need. Amen. Now, we've been uh, we've been talking about these things for 
for some days now. You know, these are, and we haven't exhausted the the subject yet. We, I imagine we'll probably continue to talk about them for quite a while, and especially when we see the the lamb in those garments before the throne. Amen. But until then, let's see. Let's see. Brother Tim brought up this morning that faith is your your seeing. You know, faith requires seeing. So <clears throat> there is an exhortation to the office to, to seeing Jesus as high priest. It's found in uh, Hebrews 4:14. 4, seeing then, we have. Seeing then we have a great high priest. I pray that you can see that Jesus is a great high priest. He's a better. He is a better high priest, high priest, brethren. He can he can not only make provision for those things that we've done before, but he can give us grace so that we don't ever have to do them again. Amen. I pray that you can see that. He's better even than Aaron and Melchizedek because these were only a shadow of, of what Jesus would do on our behalf. And our great high priest has passed into the heavens. No high priest has ministered there before. Jesus is working in a better environment than any other high priest. Amen. And he's ministering as the Son of God. He is, in the Old Covenant, there was no, these, these were, well, they were sons of Aaron. But this man is the Son of God on our, who's ministering on our behalf. Yes. Now, what do we say to all these things? Let us hold fast. Mm -hmm. Let's Amen. hold fast, brethren. Amen. Now's not the time for wavering. Set your anchor firm. Okay. The, 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 your, hope, your hope is in him. And, um, because we have, we have such a great high priest. Amen. Um, and he's working before God continually on our behalf so so let us just con let's continue in the faith amen amen, amen. 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 Some comments brother no. i appreciate how he was talking about jesus is in a position to give out mm -hmm. he's in a position to give grace and mercy and the same way joseph was mm -hmm. he was uh, he was right next to Pharaoh, and he was in a position. He was he was the one to go to if you needed something. He he was the one who gave out the food for all the people. And Jesus is in the position to give grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Now that sounds pretty good. Then God says, Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression. For not in thy name is in him. And we needed a pre high priest who could pardon us transgression. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. said the, the high priest's work is to get the things necessary to get you to heaven from there to you. I thought that was a, a good, pretty well expressed. And he said the death of Christ is as a great a trumpet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It says, come to the waters. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. And it, it is. Amen. It does have that effect. Then he said, it's all about coming to God. It's the high priesthood. It's all about mm -hmm. coming to God. And coming, but coming to God, I mean, through Je coming to God through Jesus, but coming is not, it's not easy. That's a good, uh, a good perspective, too. There's, there's, a, there's resistance and effort and labor that has to be expended in coming to God. just a very uh, the word had to be made flesh in order to be taken from among them. Mm -hmm. That's good. I like that. The way you worked over that uh, that Hebrews 
five one text yeah. uh, and all those little phrases in there. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, you know uh, every high priest taken from among men and just yeah. laboring that thought. See, that's uh, mm -hmm. that's that's a very that's a very effectual type mm -hmm. preaching. You know, that's uh, well, I'm, I'm not saying that's all the time, but I'm just saying. That's, that, I guess that kind of feels to me. You know, it was productive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was profitable. But, yeah. Yeah. but just those, get those words. You get those words. Get those thoughts inside of you, see, mm -hmm. and, and just labor those. And just and work, we'll work on those words. I particularly enjoyed the, um, I never, I guess I never thought about uh, maybe some of the specific accounts when you brought up Stephen and oh, well, where did where did this come? Well, this was this was a ministry of the yeah. high priest, yeah. Yeah. and that just that just spurred me on to consider all, just to look out for all the other things he's gonna he's gonna do. So I'm, yeah. I'm well, I'm excited to go do that. <laughs> you know, it's really I, I really appreciate preaching that causes you to it stirs you up to think about other things so it can continue on, continue yeah. to Amen. minister to you, Amen. Amen. to uh, provoke uh, spiritual thought. <clears throat> Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 It's encouraging to know that uh, you can be in circumstances mm -hmm. like that of Stephen, or even that of Christ and Paul's, mm -hmm. and um, where you were tempted to not to give, you were tempted to take offense, to hold grudge, to not love. Show mercy as you can show mercy. Mm -hmm. um, that temptation is there, but yet we got to you know, be laboured about it. And mm -hmm. you know, Stephen's words are so reminiscent of what Christ said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it makes sense for mm -hmm. us. But yet, the high priest, because he was in that situation himself, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, well, he 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 laboured about to say the same thing as he said, That's say right. the same That's as he right. said, do the same thing. Stephen was Stephen was looking to the high priest. <laughs> when you're looking to the high, you'll start saying things like he says. That's right. Mary. Okay. He pointed out that this uh, high priest isn't there to condemn us. He's not into the world to condemn the world. Mm-hmm. Makes us uh, encouraged to draw near. Mm -hmm. You have one who condemns you. Mm -hmm. We're we're condemned. See, it's it's a. As soon as you recognize that, now's the time. Now's the time to go to the high priest. He'll deal with that. High priest can give you grace to help in the time of need. It's the help during the time of temptation. A couple of people have talked about the, the great benefit. And under, mm -hmm. under the law, if someone was tempted to sin and they went to the high priest and said, "You know, I'm really being tempted to sin," they said, "Well, come to me later. Come back. Take care of that." But they, Pertaining to God uh, has has to do with men being reconciled to God, men who have sinned. You know, it's, it's this is it's all. Brother Fred used to say it's all about sin and salvation. The whole Bible is all about sin and salvation. Well, that's a good perspective to have. And of course, in the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy <coughs> that adds that perspective. But this the uh, this matter of uh, Things pertaining to 
God. There's a lot of people that do, you know, in their prayer meetings. If you think about the in the prayer meeting, we're just we're going to just limit it to things pertaining to God. <laughs> I'll just tell you, it'd be pretty silent. You know, we couldn't, we couldn't have any of people. Well, my neighbor had a broken leg, and I want to I want to bring them uh, to remember them before the Lord. And, and uh, well, sometimes it may be all right to do that, you know. But it's uh, but those aren't the, you know, we want to hopefully you get to the place where you want to you want to bring your neighbor to the Lord. You yeah, know, and you want to. You want things. to re, you want to want to relate them to the Lord too. Things things pertaining to God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was thinking about it with Brother Eric brought up about the the ordination is continuous, but through sonship. You you got to be getting Amen. to show that it's going it's going to be through His sons. Amen. Mm-hmm. And then then He declares of Jesus the only begotten of the Father, mm-hmm. so the great High Priest. Is, is has has said you know this this was a pattern. He is in following in sonship. The great high ordination is through sonship. He's the he's the great high priest through sonship. He's the only begotten of the Father. Mm-hmm. Well, with this with this one, I'm thinking about what it says there at the end of seven about this the oath that made the high priest the, the that position. Uh, he make it the son who is consecrated forevermore. Now this matter of consecration is. is Something that we want to partake of too. I mean, we are to be consecrated unto the Lord. Amen. Unto the Lord. Amen. So, how then is our consecration? Is it through the following of rituals and procedures and laws? No, it's by being in the Son. Mm-hmm. See, He's the one that's consecrated Amen. forevermore. Mm-hmm. Amen. Our consecration is due to being in Him. Mm-hmm. Amen. Right. See, so these things are all they're all they're all tying together in showing forth that Jesus may have the preeminence in all Amen. things. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. matter of uh, Jesus' sonship and his uh, high priesthood compared to Aaron. Now, Aaron was actually at a distance from God because he wasn't one of God's sons. Yeah. Well, he was one of God's offspring, you know, but not one of God's. He wasn't. But Jesus is, there's nobody closer to mm-hmm. God than Jesus, mm-hmm. and he's our great high priest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. things are, are the basis for our faith. Right? You think about all those things and it just causes, it just bolsters your faith. Well, I think because of the high priest and what the great high priest we have in Christ, we can go up so much near and have so much confidence before God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. thoughts? Well, brethren, we uh, we were very grateful for, for you all who traveled long distances and 
your 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 uh, meeting with us has been um, very profitable for us, Absolutely. and and we hope the same can be said by you. And, yeah. Amen. and yeah. uh, it's Amen. been uh, well. I, I'm I'm grateful that we didn't uh, neglect the time together. We uh, yeah. and I'm grateful that that uh, that God showed Himself to be strong and mm-hmm. and will continue to do so. You see, this is. These aren't just things we talk about. These are things we participate and experience and uh, the, the ministry of the high priest, even as we speak about the high priest, yeah. are benefiting uh, from his yeah. from his ministry. Amen. Isn't it? Yeah. We, we can speak about it while we're participating and, and uh, receiving the, the blessing for it. And well, we've been, uh, as the scripture says, comforted together with you yes. by the mutual faith, both of you and us. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's, how, that's how the kingdom works. Amen. 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 We're partaking of that. Amen. Amen. One more thought. I was, I was, uh, I was thinking about, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you mentioned about coming to the high priest, and he's, he's for us, and he's not one to, to there to condemn. And the immediate, immediate thing that Christ brings to us is blessing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's right, right away. We, we come to him, blessing. Mm-hmm. You, if, you, if you can get, if you can get to him, you get in close with him. It's, it's just like the, it's one of the, like the over. Everything kind of falls under the umbrella of blessing. You know, it's it's a covenant. The covenant is a covenant. Of, I will I will bless them. Yeah. Amen. You know, and we're grateful to God for that. Amen. 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 I also think that as we see these things, we realize how much people need to know these yes. things. Yes. Yeah. 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 And you think about we have a small group here, we have a small group in Indiana, and our our hearts just are burdened that other people might see these things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And have this kind of unity and love of the truth. So let's be praying. And praying that God would raise up more people. That this, the things that you've seen will be able to spread to other people around here, closer, mm-hmm. nearby. There are people who are hungry. Who are needing to be fed. They're not being fed in the churches, many of them. They're hungry for God. God's able to bring us together. Mm-hmm. Amen. So just pray for these things and be mm-hmm. diligent about this praying. Mm-hmm. And that they know that they're the church, that it's not a building. Mm-hmm. That's right. It's made by hand. Amen. That it's God's people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. Amen. Well, we know we know that there's a remnant. We know that there's there's brethren all over the world, and and it's just it's very good to be it's very good to see them. You know, it's, <laughs> there's a, it's very good to be among them, and and, uh, and God is certainly able to bring us into fellowship with them. And so we ask Him that He would continue.